Hi, everyone. I'm Hossein Ranema. I'm an academic entrepreneur. Uh, I built a startup called Flybits that is now working with some of the largest financial institutions in the world, helping them to really understand their data and use that data to engage with their customers on a more personalized fashion. But wearing my academic hat, I was identifying a paradigm shift on the internet. We realized that the internet is becoming too centralized, and it's also it's, a, it's becoming very selfish. A lot of people are building algorithms to personalize some things or hyper-personalize some things for you or for an individual needs. So one thing we were looking at was that if our new generation, the millennials, are creating gigabytes of data, many of them gigabytes of data on a daily basis, have we reached a level of data maturity and computing maturity that we can now use that to create a digital version of ourselves? It's not necessarily around singularity and building a super uh, computer that is a decision-making platform, but it was more about how can we create our expertise and really expose it and share it with our peers and really come up with new business models and, and creative ways to, uh, to, to, to engage with each other. So this is a prototype that some of my students are building. We'll be happy to show you as part of the demo. And the way this works is that, think about it, that instead of you talking to a machine like Siri and ask Siri a question, which are a bunch of algorithms that we have no idea how they work, you can basically activate the digital construct of your peers or people that you trust in your network and ask them a question. So we now have software agents that the user can own. They can activate it on their emails. They can activate it on their VoIP calls, on their social media. And it will start to understand sentiments. It understands to understand patterns. And then they have the ability to expose these expertise within their social network. So think about the fact that if I'm a student and I have a question from an IP lawyer, instead of paying $500 per hour, I can basically activate the avatar of that lawyer who I have access to in my digital concierge service and ask certain questions, especially in fields that knowledge is very procedural uh, and, and sequential, similar to law, medicine, and, 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 and other sectors. So this is something that we are currently building it as a platform. Um, a lot of reporters like to kind of create a dark scene around that, that it's kind of for the future of um, afterlife and all that. You can lend your expertise to the loved ones after you, 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 uh, you, you go away. But you, the key thing that we are interested in is to really enabling us to collect our expertise and lending it to our peers so that a better collective intelligence can be created. We are also using it to understand how organizations can benefit from it. So we are working with one of the largest wealth management banks in the US. And they came to us and said, well, our basic uh, business model of creating uh, money is to generate service fees out of these investment instruments. Now they are using a capability of, of what I showed you that, are, that is connecting their high net worths and baby boomers to their affluent millennial groups, who is their next generation customers, and they are creating these mentor-mentee relationships, and their idea is to monetize that network effect. So these are some of the new trends that we are seeing that if these types of expertise can be encapsulated in form of these constructs, it can actually create some very new business models that we have not uh, thought about. We launched a social network with one of our partners in Europe, which is more like a city guide, but instead of you relying on a centralized repository like TripAdvisor or, uh, or Google, you can basically land in a city you can see which one of your friends were there, and you can start to see that city through their lens. We think this is very valuable because it will reduce bias, it will create new models of sharing, but it's the same platform that we are now applying it to different um, areas. The manifestation of this can be through all sort of medium. We, it could be through augmented reality, it could be through conversational interfaces, voice assistance. Our goal is to really build that enabling platform. We have a tool now that is visual. Anyone can basically select ontologies and taxonomies, 
create their persona saying this is my father's profile and this is what I want to give access to my children, but this is my professional profile and this is what I want to give to my students. And you can build these roaming profiles uh, with the tools that we are creating that is minimizing the complexity of data science for people who are interested to use these. So I'll wrap up my slides by asking these questions. Do we think our digital identities can become sentient? It's a scary world, but it will expose a lot of questions that in the research community we would love to address. If we do that, who will own our digital footprint? Who do we trust? Do we trust the machine? Do we trust the loved one? One thing which is great is, can we use technologies like this to bring philanthropy at scale? There is a philanthropy in every single one of us. Can we use that to, to do that at scale? And can we think about these next generation of uh, intergenerational recommendations? Thank you very much.